All right, how you doing, guys? All right, we'll uh, we'll get started here first off on uh, you know just some updates, getting ready for this weekend uh, and the game at Tampa. So we'll rule three players out: Adrian Claiborne, Jamon Brown, and Brandon Powell. Um, all those guys were ruled out today. Uh, we also um, signed Chris Cooper, um, brought him up from the practice squad. So um, last piece we had uh, for our Tommy Nobis jersey winner, we thought uh, Matt Schaub, you know, for this week, this is a guy who's uh, stood, you know, for the all the right things for many on this team. And we thought what a, you know, classy example for that. And the team uh, certainly agrees. So. Uh, heading to this matchup, both teams played well, and uh, you know both teams over the last seven games, five and two, and all sorts of matchups. So, uh, you know, I like to focus where the guys are at and looking to finish this block, you know, really strong. So, press conference had a, on a Friday usually has about four of us, so I see there's considerably more than that today. <coughs> so I'm uh, figured you must have some questions. So we'll uh, we'll open it up and get with them. We have Coach Aaron, uh, you know, Lou Lewis also getting the news from the owner and uh, has an early talk to his team today uh, after practice. Well, I'll share with you really, you know, kind of what I shared with the team, um, you know, this morning. I said it's, it is because of you players. Not every coach gets to see his team fight for him and say they are. And I thought that's very humbling, you know, for sure. But as far as, uh, you know, you know, with Arthur, I said, number one, um, the reason I am so fired up is because uh, this has been the hardest and most invaluable year for me uh, as a coach ever. Um, I've made mistakes and we get to fix them. And I think that's an important thing and use these lessons here. Not everybody else, you know, always has the chance to do that. So um, I certainly hate the results, but man, I learned a lot. And uh, I'd say more than anything, I can't wait to apply, uh, you know, the things that I've learned with this team and move them forward. So um, that's what I'd say from, you know, his visit today and, and what I s discussed with the team. When you said, uh, I talked to him, uh, he said, you know, your ability to be self-aware and reflective, uh, you know, led to, um, you know, the decision and, and probably to the team being able to, you know, get to this point today. I would say that's that's a nice comment to hear. Or do you agree with that? Statement? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you'd. Um, well, I would say. Um, important during this process. Yeah, well, I'd say. Reflective and uh, learning. Yeah, I say there was a lot of change heading into our season. I certainly take responsibility for that. You know, three new coordinators. And, uh, you know, for me, certainly, I felt like I took on too much um, at times. That's being head coach, defensive coordinator, trying to work with the DN. So I learned that, and I fixed that. And uh, I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, I was able to do that. And I'm excited to get rolling. Um, we got a lot of good pieces in place. Uh, I think we laid a good foundation over the last eight weeks of what that would look like, especially for me. And uh, so that's why um, I recognize when there's a problem, I'm not somebody to sit back on my hands and not do anything about it. Yeah, I think. You know, that'd be a great question for next week, but, you know, for sure, we're going to, you know, dig into every single, you know, part that we can evaluate and look at. And uh, so, yeah, ev nothing's not on the table. You know, we're going to look at everything. Obviously, the, you know, having the start we did makes it almost uh, impossible to get back and battle for what you want to. So, uh, like I said, I hate the results, but, man, I learned a hell of a lot, and uh, I'm already ready to apply some of those lessons, but you don't get to do that just yet. But uh, yeah, there's nothing that we wouldn't look at to see how can we do it better. Coach, is that just um, Raheem Morris is going to be doing the defensive coordinator next right. season? Are you inclined to stick with Dirk Cutter as your offensive coordinator for next season? Yes. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I think that'd be a great one for next week, Vaughn. Like, honestly, um, we'll get we'll get together Monday and, and have a good visit about the staff and where we're at and you know what we could do. But uh, for us, really, the focus right now and over the next couple of days, you know, will be on the team and our game this weekend. But uh, no doubt, I'll get into that, you know, you know, with you a whole bunch next week. Just for both of you, um, what are your thoughts on the restructured um, complaints from Lou Williams report before into Rich McKay as coach to Jeffrey Dahmer? Well, I think number one, we, like we already have a good working relationship with Rich, so this is not like somebody that uh, Thomas and I don't, you know, already spend a. a you know, a bunch of time with and, and enjoy doing so. So uh, I think for both of us, I don't want to speak for Thomas. He can comment on it for sure. But Rich is a good football guy, and uh, he has been for a long time. And so we lean on him already for a lot of things. And so to have him here, um, you know, more, I think that's a good thing. Well, 
Well, I think it's it's been it's been great to see you know KZ thrive in, in his position. I think that's a really important thing. I you know watching how he has you know set a tone, helped to set a tone on the defense was important. Uh, you know, continue to 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 be impressed with you know what's going on. Uh, you know with our corners right now. They're really starting to come along and I think they're developing as young corners with the talent that we thought they had. They were, you know, had their early struggles, of course. They were growing and learning and uh, that's been that's been really impressive to see how they're coming along a and only expect more in the future from them. Yeah, I would agree. I thought um, corners as well and I thought um, on the offensive side, Calvin, I thought, you know, you see his progress and also Russell Gage. I thought, you know, went from a role that hadn't been, you know, as big and to a bigger role. So both those guys, I thought, assumed the responsibility that goes with those roles. Uh, and I'd agree also with Sheffield and uh, with Isaiah. Yeah, that's a good one. I would say uh, number one, um, there there are those that happens, and you know, like hopefully it's not a skid, like a quick stop, you know, not a skid. So to me, um, how do you get right back, you know, to playing the identity and style? And I thought that was one of the things that took a long time for our team this year to capture, as opposed to creating our identity, a problem here, a problem there, to try and solve some of those ones, where it was penalties or you know a turnover margin, you know you know, poor communication, whatever it might have been. Let's make sure those things are in order uh, right off the bat. Yeah, well, I think always it's easier to have hindsight. You know, I think it was a pretty bold move to do. So it wasn't like I had sat on my hands, you know, for the first eight weeks and certainly didn't, you know, walk away from it, you know, the last seven weeks. So I would say um, the thing I'd like to see change is results. And so not to have the results, you know, go early on, I thought that was a big deal. So anytime there's change uh, that goes for the better, yeah, why didn't we do it earlier? I think it's a fair question. but. Um, I think it's pretty unusual to make the type of moves that we made in that space to um, not just defensively, but position and player personnel to go through it. So he had been helping some prior to that, and we had had put some changes in order probably two or three games prior to that. So um, I felt like when some of the problems came up, we addressed it, you know, and uh, it came to a spot. You'd heard me use the analogy before. You look under the hood, you think it's good, you go back. So it wasn't like I just waited until that time. I was trying different things to see if it would work, and ultimately, the thing that worked the best was the biggest change. And so, um, that's what I did, and, and we're fortunate that it did. You talked about results, and I know Arthur didn't actually put a specific number on next year or anything like that. But do you personally set a goal for yourself and say, obviously, he said seven to nine is not acceptable in a year and stuff like that. But do you put a goal on yourself and you say, hey, you know what, we got to do this? next season. Well, I think like number one, I you carry the weight of the, you know, the position um, that'll be going on six years and that hasn't changed. Um, that responsibility, the urgency to, to do really well. Um, but what has to change is the results. And I think everybody in the building knows that. Uh, but as far as a, a specific number or timeline, like, no, we want to make sure we can play as good as we can. That always starts, uh, you know, with the division and then you move from there. But uh, as far as what it takes to do that, different years takes different things. And so um, different numbers, what have you. So uh, we're just going to go for it 100% as hard as we can. And uh, that will be the change. Right. That's a good question. I would say um, none of it from a weighted standpoint, Jeff, I guess, because um, what you always want to see is, you know, how the guys are performing, you know, but um, it doesn't, you know, at the end of it, it's still the same volume and number. And so I guess I look back to say why, you know, and like everybody, fans and everybody else say why the, you know, the big shift and how could that take place. And 
but as far as a wait for it, I, I don't think I have a good answer for that. Um, other than that, it just took our team longer to get their identity up and going. Um, our turnover margin is better. Our penalties are down. We're playing more complimentary football. So, um, but I don't have a good answer for the weight of it. Other than that, um, when the ultimate goal is, you know, playing postseason football, then when that doesn't happen, you know, you you dig deep and you try to find out why. But I, I get where you're going, but I don't have a good answer for weighted on it. I can probably hit it first, and I'll kick it over to Thomas on it. Um, it's human nature, right? When uh, you know it's talked about in you know your job or performance and how it goes, but um, at the end of it, you know you want to make sure it's for the team. And so, what could I do with my time, with my energy, to help get our team right? And so that's why I have um, such belief in the players and what they are and how they fought, because that means a lot to me. So, as much as it would seem. You know, you want to plan ahead. I just tried to stay as as present and locked in as I could on that moment and that matchup. And if there was a change that had to be made, I was. I just tried to stay aggressive into that space. There's definitely uh, driving home or in, or your mind goes there, and you just try to. You have those thoughts to bring it back because I thought any time I spent away, it'd been hard. And so I just wanted to make sure, no matter what, you know, I was going to give every single ounce that I had to this team. And so, and if that was going to be enough. Um, that would play out, and if it wouldn't, that would play out. So it didn't make it any easier, I can promise you that, but that's at least how I approached it you know, to the end. I'd like to probably say that. I, I think similar to Dan, of course, your mind goes there every once in a while. I've been in this 12 years in this role going on 13, and there have been some tough times. There have been some good times, of course. My focus and my goal through the season was, of course, to support Dan, but it was also, and it was also to support the rest of the administration, football operations. So I spent a lot of time you know, trying to reassure people within the organization that we are, we're moving forward, we're con con going to continue to stress the importance of winning, being a winning organization, not walking around with their you know, proverbial dauber down. It was about, look, we have a really good situation in place. We need to continue to thrive here and do the best that we can do in support of the coaching staff in Q. And I thought they did a really good job as an administration and as a football operations department because we came together and we spoke honestly about a lot of things and, and spent a lot of time in that area. How did you perform if you were the owner? Well, I said, like, I would have been upset, you know, for sure. And uh, no matter what, like, this guy's a great competitor. And so um, when you don't have a chance to, you know, be involved in that on the day-to-day -day side, talking about, like, from, you know, Arthur regarding ownership, uh, doesn't mean he's any less competitive or his heart's into it. I mean, like, anybody who's successful as he is, you can tell how much they care and how much they're into it and how important this team is to them. So when you don't deliver, man, you hate it. You hate that you didn't deliver and the results. But um, you also want to make sure, like, we are going to get it right and we're going to learn from these mistakes and show you how to do that. And so when your boss says that you think you can get it right, go prove it. Like, that's a fight I would run to because when he says that, like, all right, you know, like, I want to back that up and show you. And so that's what he did. Thomas, just quick, which three things go down this early as a um, owner of the Atlanta team? We know the Buckeyes and Reds offseason go down, mm -hmm. but um, just in the past, just through your team this offseason, everybody's not worried about it, but um, just your thoughts on what you've got in that center hat standpoint and getting you just the extra piece to get to next year. Sure. No, I, I, I agree with Rich on that and Arthur on that, that point. We spent a lot of times being creative in the off season to try to put together what we did last year leading into this season uh, by acquiring certain players, whether it was in free agency or whether it was re, you know, reworks on our own guys. We continue to be you know, very happy with where we are with our core players. We, we spent a lot of money on that, of course, and we continue to expect big things out of those players. Um, of course, we're going to have to be, continue to be creative, and I think with the appropriate moves into the future, uh, we're going to be in a good spot. I'm, I am not concerned about it being a situation where we are going to be in uh, what has been perceived out there as cap hell. It's not the case at all. We'll, we will accomplish what we need to accomplish to continue to be able to bring the right players in here to be a con you know contender. Uh, that's my feeling about it.
Well, I really like where our, our right side of the offensive line is progressing as a youthful group, of course, and to watch both of those guys play off of each other. Not only are their personalities, do they work together, but their mindset and their approaches work together for sure. They're both hard-charging guys, very, very determined, and that's fun to see next to a guy who has a ton of experience in Alex Mack. So I think that whole right side is really starting to come together and only expect it to come together exponentially more going into, this, into next season. On the left side, of course, we continue to, to grow. Of course, Jake is, is a, a really sound individual on our left tackle situation. And again, offensive line-wise, like, like any position in, uh, on this team, we'll continue to, to always look and, and continue to improve the, the depth along the offensive line as well as a lot of the other positions. Jim, uh, Arthur spoke at, at great length about his belief that the um, patience pays off in terms of keeping a, a, a management team together head coach and, and, and GM, and he even mentioned that, you know, uh, an example of the Saints with sticking with three straight seven and nines with, with Peyton. Are, are, are you aware in your fraternity of coaching that maybe this is a, a rare thing to have that kind of patience as uh, in the ownership ship position? Well, I would say, you know, number one, to be as successful as he has, I, you know, he recognizes, you know, that for sure, you know, from lots of different examples from his background. Um, I don't know. I, I haven't really, like I said, <laughs> it's a lot to process in terms of, uh, you know, looking too far down the line. I've tried to stay in the moment of where we're at. Um, I do know, like, um, you know, there's been some coaches that have had, you know, stuff together but had to go and prove some le lessons elsewhere, you know, whether it was a second or third experience. So for me to have the chance to do that here and apply them here with him, um, that means a lot to me, a hell of a lot. You know, like I want to win the championship here for him and with him because of his belief. And so that won't ever stop. And uh, he's a big reason of why I wanted to come here. And uh, he's a big reason of why we want to kick ass and do right here. So um, that's what we certainly plan on doing. About 7.30 this morning. No, I don't know. <laughs> like we talk all the time. I mean, this is not, um, you know, it wasn't like a like grand opening envelope, you know, like open, you know, this is, we're always in communication. Is there a master season manager in there yourself in mind for kind of the, the things that the team has been able to address in the coaching staff this year? Or is it just word on the street? I could say when I first thought it was going to sound unusual, we, the first half we played complimentary football was in the second half against Seattle. And that may sound for you guys covering the team crazy because to go all the way into your seventh or eighth game at that point and not have a game that was really complete in that spot. And so I'm not even referencing that entire game. But I thought that was the opening of complimentary football and uh, how that took place and how that happened. And so that part, Kels had been missing in our game and uh, feeding off one another, a turnover, a score, a big play, a stop. Sometimes you know what it looks like, but you can't describe it, you know, in complimentary football. I know it's a coaching term, but it's the truth. And uh, that's when I first saw what it could be. And then I tried to reinforce that with them whenever we saw that. I think more than anything, like, yeah, you better start right, you know, because for us to, you know, put ourselves, you know, behind, you know, in the first, you know, part of the season, that makes it difficult, you know, to come back. Your margin for error gets so small. So uh, that'll be a big, you know, discussion point for us into off season and training camp and preseason to make sure, um, you know, that uh, we're able to start like we want and have that complimentary football right off the bat. But uh, it's all phases, all ways to do it. You know, like I said, some of the ones of penalties and turnover margins where like those things add up, and so you keep chopping it down. And I was, and there's be some things that we'll get into next week for sure. But uh, yeah, you better have that because to to beat the best teams in the NFC in our division first, uh, you better have that. All right, thank you guys. Thank you all.